Thank you. I'm gonna I think this other person. Uh <laughs> Cool, 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 cool. Nope. Just admitted one more person. I'll let them get settled real quick, and then we'll go ahead and jump into it. Um. Let's see, clapping hands. That's very exciting. All right. So, um. Hi, everyone. My name is uh, Richie Thaxton. I'm a PhD student here in the uh, Earth and Spatial Science Department. Um, I'm also the uh, GPSA Chair of Awards. So today I'll be chatting with you about um, how to apply for the travel publishing and the newly uh, voted on exhibition awards. So uh, and also thank you both to Amanda and Michael and Cogs for setting this up and making this happen, giving me a place to um, speak about speak about these awards. So. All right. Oops, sorry. sorry this little thing. All right. So as I'm sure you're all here for, um, we'll be talking about applying for uh, the travel awards offered through um, the Graduate and Professional Student Association. Um, what are these GPSA awards? Um, so the big idea is here is that these awards are reimbursement based and funded funded using graduate student fees. Um, and provide funding of last resort for students at UI Moscow. Um, so I just want to break some of that down real quick. The first part, the reimbursement based, um, we can only we can only give out a we can only pay you back for what you spend. So that means keeping receipts, um, and that means we aren't able to uh, give you money ahead of time um, when you apply for any of these awards. Um, so please keep that in mind. Um, these are all the other, but the other exciting thing is that these awards are funded using graduate student fees. Um, so each of you is paying into this program. Um, I'm not sure what the, the student fee amount is at this point, um, but anyone who is a uh, student on the Moscow campus um, in one of the main departments, which I'll get into a little bit, is paying into this program. So it's, we really encourage you to use, to take advantage of it because it is, you know, partially using your, your money. Um, and the last little thing is sort of the guiding philosophy of the GPSA awards and that um, we provide funding of last resorts for students. Uh, when we're looking at these applications, we're really um, expecting students to do their due diligence and finding other sources of funding to fund either their travel or their publishing or their exhibitions. Um, because we really want to put this money where it's um, to the give this money to the people um, that are most in need of it. Um, so please also keep in, that in mind when writing your applications. So we have uh, two categories of award. Um, we'll start with the travel awards first. So the big first question, right, is am I eligible for uh, a travel award? Um, Travel awards are eligible. You're eligible for a travel award if you are a graduate student on the Moscow campus or in online. Unfortunately, we can't um, provide uh, travel awards to WAMI students, um, students at other campuses, such as the Boise and Idaho Falls campuses, um, and CBA students, um, just because uh, those students aren't actively paying into the program. Um, so it'd be using uh, graduate student fees who are paying and then giving it to students who aren't actually contributing to the program. Um, you can apply for one travel and one publishing award per fiscal year. Um, that's that's an and on or, right? Um, so, and that fiscal year stretches from July 1st to June 30th of the next year. Um, and if you're full-time or you're part-time, um, both of you can apply. Part-time students, you can, um, 
because you're not paying as many fees into the program, um, we may reduce the amount of a travel award that you're eligible for, but we do try to fund every fund fully every application that we get. Um, and so when students apply, you can apply for, oh, there's a typo here that I should have cut. Um, you can apply for $700 maximum in domestic, uh, for domestic travel, and then that should be a 900 for international travel. And that's the maximum amount you can apply for, um, and that is due to tax reasons. So you've determined you're eligible. Uh, now you need to determine when you actually need to apply. And so we have six cycles. We have six travel award cycles uh, during the year. Sorry, I'm looking in the chat real quick. Um, yes, so to run, uh, like I mentioned, the international travel is uh, $900, not $700. Um, but yeah, so when do you apply? We have six award cycles per fiscal year. Um, the deadlines are on the 15th of every every um, every other month. Um, so uh, unless that falls on a weekend, in which case you have until that next Monday, noon of the next Monday to turn it in. Um, but these are the these are the six deadlines that you should be aware of. July 15th, September 15th, November 15th, um, January 15th, March 15th, May 15th. Uh, we've already passed the September 15th deadline. So if people are looking for travel, um, travel awards in the coming months, November 15th is the deadline that November 15th is the deadline that you want to be uh, shooting for. But that really depends on um, when your travel is occurring. So you can apply for a travel award up to two cycles before your travel ends, and then one cycle after your travel has completed. Um, so as the example here, if you travel, if your travel is between June 1st and the 5th, say you're going to um, some sort of conference, um, you can apply for uh, the award in March, May, or July. Um, March would be two cycles before um, your uh, travel happened. May is the one cycle before. And then July is the last opportunity uh, you would have to apply for an award for that trip. Um, that is due, there's a 60 day uh, reimbursement limit uh, for uh, Re 60 day limit for reimbursements on travel expenses. So it's it's really important that if you are applying in the last cycle, um, you make sure your application is correct and that you have all the receipts necessary to um, to submit uh, when we when and if we approve your award. Um, but that is just to say that it's much better to apply early. Um, if you apply early and say you don't get the award, um, you ha can have other chances to apply for travel, uh, apply for an award for that travel. Uh, so please keep that in mind. So you're eligible and you know when to apply. So what do you need in order to uh, submit this submit this award? So the first thing you want to do is you want to check out the application checklists that are available on the GPSA website. Um, that gives you a, a really nice breakdown of the next few things I'm going to talk about, uh, and a lot more detail and and in, and in writing as opposed to me just speaking it out here. Um, but when you're ready to um, submit your application, you're going to go to the Qualtrics page, uh, which is also, uh, the link to that is also available on the GPSA website. Um, and it's going to ask you uh, a number of questions, um, mostly just gathering information about um, your student status, um, the type of travel you're doing, and then um, a budget of, of, of your travel expenses. In addition to filling out that Qualtrics application, we're going to need a student cover letter from you. The student cover letter talks about um, the travel you're going on, just sort of the, you know, the dates, the times, the locations, the facts of the travel, as well as um, your reason for traveling, um, why it's important uh, that GPSA covers it, and also uh, talking about the other funding sources available or not available to you uh, for your travel. Um, the information that we see in your student cover letter should match the faculty advisor letter. That's sort of your letter of recommendation saying that 
your faculty advisor is uh, aware of the travel that you're taking. They support you going on this travel um, and that they also confirm that they don't have any funding on any of their grants or in the department uh, to fund the travel that you're going on. Um, in addition to those two things, you'll need to uh, include evidence of participation uh, or proof of payment. So when you apply early for a GPSA travel award, um, we need you need to submit some sort of evidence that you are going on the trip that you're um, say you're going to take. Um, so this can be things like uh, your conference registration form uh, or letters from uh, from people in a workshop that you're going to meet meet with. Um, but as soon as your travel has occurred. Um, we expect you to uh, submit uh, not just uh, like the conference registration, but also um, receipts uh, receipts for your travel. So that includes like the conference, like the registration receipt, um, airplane receipts, that sort of thing, because those receipts are going to be crucial to when you submit your reimbursement forms. And so that we need to see those beforehand to make sure, you know, um, we're going to give you the correct amount of the funding that you, you say you need. Um, and the last little thing that you need is the funding information and student status document. Um, that's a, a form that you can download from the Qualtrics application that will is essentially just um, going to the, admit, the administrators in your department and say and asking, um, not asking, but saying what funding um, is available to you, and it's totally okay if there's 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 four boxes, and it says if you've applied for funding, if you have funding, if there's no funding, it's totally okay if there's no funding available. But we do need to see that you've gone to your department, and um, they say there's no funding available for you, so we can um, supply you with the travel award. Um, one thing I've seen a lot of people struggle with with the travel awards is the budget. Uh, so I did wanna just take a little bit of time and talk about um, the categories that we see here and what we expect to see. Um, some of this may be, you know, may, may seem obvious, but I see a lot of mistakes with it and it uh, slows us down when we have to sort of decipher what, um, how people's budgets are working for their travel. Um, first thing I wanna mention is that please only put dollar amounts in the total amount column. Um, we don't need words or descriptions there, just, just uh, numerical values. Um, and then in the details uh, column, that second column there, um, that's where you can put the details of saying, okay, this is how much I paid for airfare. This is how much I paid when I drove to the airport, et cetera. And there's a number of little quirks with each of these. Um, for the registration, um, we don't, we don't cover, uh, we cover the cost for you registering to go to a conference. What we don't cover is, um, costs associated with abstract submissions, workshop costs, or membership fees. Um, and there is a slight caveat with membership fees. Um, uh, I recently looked at sort of, uh, Idaho policy regarding that and, if your membership fee, if if the cost of the membership fee reduces your total registration by amount that's larger than the membership fee, that is actually something we will be able to cover. But otherwise, um, that's sort of the exception. In most cases, we won't cover membership fees. Um, transportation, um, you know, again, in the total list, the total amount uh, it's costing you to travel to this event. And then in the details, provide a breakdown. Um, we'll need the airfare receipts. We'll need the receipts for these other things. Um, people will estimate um, the public transportation costs, um, which is totally fine if that's not completely exact, but try to do your best with estimating how much that will cost. And then if you're driving somewhere, the total cost you can get reimbursed for is the number of mile driven times the um, 0.67, and that's a rate sent by the university of 67 cents per mile of reimbursement. For the lodging, um, along with your total amount, please include the nightly rate in the detail section. Um, 
just so we don't have to back calculate it out. And we can make sure that the number of days of your stay makes sense with uh, the amount of lodging days you're trying to claim. Um, for meals, um, I think this is what gives people the most trouble um, is your meal costs depend on where you're going. Um, and to get that information, you need to go to this website, the gsa.gov. Um, it lets you search for a uh, location um, and then it will give you, it'll tell you what's the maximum amount of per diem you can claim per day uh, for that location. And a special note on this is that the first and last days of travel have a lower per diem rate because um, you're not spending the whole day there. There's a, a it's assumed that you're sort of, you know, eating eating before you take off on your trip or before you leave for the day. So uh, keep that in mind when you're calculating those total costs. Um, subtotal, this is just simple addition. Um, again, it's something that gets messed up very frequently. We're just adding the total from the four boxes above. For the funds secured from other sources, um, this is the total amount of money that you have received outside of GPSA funding um, that we need to account for when trying to assess the total need. Um, so let's say the subtotal cost of your proposed travel was $2,000. Um, but you've secured a thousand dollars in funding, um, then your remaining expense expenses in G would be the thousand dollars, um, and you would be eligible for a full travel award. Um, please keep in mind that, that the funding secured from other sources, that information should match what we see in all the other documents, like the student cover letter and the, um, uh, the faculty letter and the, um, uh, funding status and student status and funding document as well. Um, otherwise, we have to email you and ask more questions. So just make sure that everything is consistent throughout your application. All right, so that, that's sort of the gist of travel, um, the travel applications. Um, I'm gonna go to the next category now, which is the publishing and exhibition, starting with the publishing. So publishing, same sort of thing that we saw with the travel awards. Um, the same things will apply here. It's open to uh, students that are paying the, uh, contributing to this program through the student fees, which are uh, graduate students on the Moscow campus and online. Um, you can apply for one publishing award per fiscal year in addition to that one travel award. Uh, and then per article, it's $700 uh, reimbursement. All right, so when you apply, it's the exact same deadlines, um, funding award cycles as we have for the travel award. The only little change here is that you can apply when you have received written acceptance of your publication and up to one deadline following the actual publication of your article. So in the example here, um, if your article is published January 1st, the latest you can apply is January 15th. You have to get um, your application in by that next funding uh, funding cycle deadline after your article has been published. What you need is also pretty similar to what we see in the travel award. Um, we still need the student cover letter. And this, this time we're talking more about um, your publication, uh, why it's important, um, and uh, the funding that you have available to get this, this article published. The faculty letter is gonna say much of the same. It's, a, it's endorsing the, um, endorsing the um, your application and the publication, as well as saying how much money is actually available uh, to publish this article. Um, funding information, the student status document, um, much of the same is going to break down the funding available to you to publish. And instead of, uh, travel receipts, we're going to need um, evidence of acceptance from the publisher. If the article, um, if you have the receipt um, from the from the publisher um, saying how much the article is going to cost, we need that information. Um, otherwise, we just need the um, evidence of acceptance in the article abstract. 
Um, and again, you will be going to Qualtrics uh, to fill out all the information regarding this and submit these, these four documents. One special note, um, as opposed to travel, you can apply for joint applications with a publishing award. Um, but if there are co-authoring students making a joint application, you must secure administrative support um, from one department um, before you do that. Um, so this is to ensure that um, this is uh, to ensure that the money is going to get distributed, dist actually distributed to you. And the best vehicle to do that is if the, the department receives the money and then is able to supply it to you. So please keep that in mind if you're co-authoring a joint application. And so the last award I want to talk about, um, which is exciting because it's uh, it was just voted on at the last uh, GPSA meeting to happen, is the Exhibition Award. Um, and so this falls in the publishing category um, because our sort of reasoning here is that um, where publishing awards, uh, publishing is seen as sort of the um, output of a uh, degree, a master's or a PhD degree in the sciences. Um, we typically don't have uh, students um, in uh, the MFA program or uh, say like the music school producing a publication as part of their uh, their thesis or as part of uh, as the output for their degree. It's more uh, geared around exhibitions. And so we were trying to address this need. Um, and so we're hoping the exhibition awards addresses this need Again, it's very, very new. So if people have comments, please, or questions, please reach out. Um, there will be some kinks that we need to work out with this, but we're we're really excited to get this moving forward. Um, and so this is, the award is uh, open to, it says um, students involved with the MFA program. That's changed a little bit. This is open to um, any students that are pr uh, producing some sort of exhibition as part of their uh, as part of their thesis, um, so it's uh, it's again up to a seven hundred total. Um, we were envisioning uh, these would be reimbursement for material costs. Um, so when we were talking with the MFA students who brought this idea forward to us, um, what they needed help with covering the costs was of, of materials. So um, basically um, not equipment, but you know, but the materials used to create the exhibitions that they're creating. Um, so students can apply, one special thing about this is that students can apply twice during their final year. Um, as I mentioned with the travel and publishing awards, um, you can only apply for one of those per fiscal year. What's different about this one is you can apply twice in your final year, but the total of those two applications cannot exceed $700. So say for example, you wanna apply twice, the first application could be $350. The next one can only be $350 to get at that because um, you reach that $700 limit. For the ex exhibition awards, um, same the same award cycle supply here, um, and the same sort of uh, same sort of rules apply. You can apply for two cycles before your material purchase dates. If you give us a good idea of what you're purchasing and why, how you're going to use it, um, and then up to one cycle after material purchases. Um, so again just like with the travel awards and the publishing awards, we're running up against a 60 day limit after your purchase to get you reimbursed. Otherwise there's uh, tax issues that come into account. Uh, so again, if you're interested in one of these awards, it's better to plan out early, apply early uh, to make sure that there's no delay and there's no issues of you getting you reimbursed for uh, those costs. The other big thing here is that this is geared towards students in their final year. Um, mostly because we're really interested in funding these awards to help students with the completion of a thesis project rather than just sort of any project. All right. 
I you've all seen this slide many times at this point. Um, the the checklist for the exact exhibition awards has been made. Um, and then it will post it on the website very soon. Um, you're going to need a student cover letter, again explaining the exhibition, explaining um, why it's important, and then talking about the other funding that you have available or don't have available to you. The letter from the committee chair is going to talk about much of the same thing, um, as well as talking about the funding that they have available uh, for you in their um, in their lab in their group. Funding information student status document is going to look very similar. Um, and then for the evidence of material use, um, if you're applying before uh, your purchases, uh, we expect you to um, supply some sort of uh, proof that you're going to, you're purchasing materials you're actually going to use in this exhibition. Um, so that can be conceptual drawings, that can be a, just an outline of the project. Um, but then if you're applying uh, once the receipts, once you've actually purchased the materials, we do need those actual receipts to make sure um, the funding uh, in those receipts matches the budget. All right, so special note about taxes is that um, these GPSA awards, you do need to consider taxes when uh, you apply for these GPSA awards. Um, unfortunately, the reality of this is that international students, not from a country with a tax treaty with the US, um, your GPSA awards are considered other income and will be taxed at 30%. Um, so this is, you know, not, we, we recognize this isn't great, um, that there's a disparity, disparity here between the domestic and international students. We're sort of hemmed in um, by tax law, unfortunately, but please keep that in mind when you're um, applying for these awards. Uh, for domestic students, for domestic students, um, your GPSA rewards would be reported on a 1098T, um, and then you'll be responsible for reporting them on your tax return as additional. Wait, 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 wait. I heard someone say, wait. Oh, not, no, not you, sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I wasn't sure if you were... Uh, Ask My bad. No, <laughs> <laughs> no, no worries. No worries. Um, we're just about this. We got one more slide here. Uh, thanks for all for sticking with me so far. Um, where to find the award applications? Please go to the U Idaho GPSA website dash awards. Um, the link to the applications will look much like these yellow buttons here. That'll take you to the Qualtrics survey um, where you can fill everything out. Um, this used to be a new online format. We've been using this online format for a year and it's saved us a lot of time and hopefully been easier on everyone else rather than having to physically submit a paper application in a mailbox. So, um, but you know, there's always typos, there's always issues. So if there are, please let us know, please email me. Um, and yeah. In addition to that, we have other programs too that I'm not going to talk about today because um, everyone has things to do. Um, but keep an eye out for the Outstanding Graduate Student Awards. Um, we're hoping to get those up and running fairly soon uh, for this for this year. And then we also support GPSA affiliated student organizations. So if you have a student organization with graduate students in it, we will um, we can supply a little bit of money to help you all get started and then you can apply for uh, future awards that um, can help you host workshops and things like that so that's pretty much all i have for me um, again if you have questions this is the email to send them to gpsa-travel at uidaho.edu um, you know i'm also a graduate student so i'm trying my best to respond to things and uh, respond to messages in a timely matter, manner. It doesn't always work. So, you know, be patient. Uh, if you don't hear from me immediately or not immediately, but you don't hear from me in like a week, it doesn't hurt to send another email. Uh, and definitely email if you have questions before the deadline. Um, the more, the earlier you email me, the earlier we can work out issues and we can get your application ready to go. So, 
And that's it. I'm going to stop sharing and then I'll open it up for questions. And I see. Looks like you have something in the chat. Gotcha. Okay, I see. So the first one from Zane. Does this include internships? Um, that's a great question. Um, part of the part of what we look at with um, the travel award uh, is if your internship is paid, um, paid or not, and so we we will fund opportunities for you to travel for um, internships if they if there's you know it's it's clear you're not getting a salary from from this we don't fund travel to um, people doing summer work because there is the expect expectation that um, if you're taking a summer job somewhere um, you should have calculated the travel costs in with the um, the cost of the you know the amount of money that you'll earn from um, working at that job uh, with internships I know it's sort of you know they're not always paid and that they can be sort of overlapping with um, academic opportunities so it's I'll say a tentative yes on that but you know you'll have to make it really clear in your application where you're going um, what you're doing there and you know the other funding sources available to you so hopefully that answers your question Zane Uh, ah, okay, so I see there's another question from Ran um, asking if 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 you're off campus, um, can I use this to visit the Moscow campus at least once a year? Um, I, th I believe we funded opportunities like that in the past. As long as you're a Moscow student um, and you justify to us why um, the travel to the Moscow campus is important. Um, I assume it's for some sort of meeting with like your advisor. Um, you know, that, that, is, that, that is an opportunity that we, we, we can cover. Um, again, you know, highly recommend talking to your advisor, talking to your department. Um, because if they need you on campus, it's, you know, they should also be looking at ways to, to cover your costs, right? But um, if there's no other opportunities for you to do that, yeah, that's, that's that would that travel would be fine. Cool, okay, cool. Sounds like Rand is good. Um, are there any other questions that people have? Chat. So another question from Rohan, oh no, Rohan, sorry. Can I provide only estimates of other funding sources in my application? My department offers funding for publishing travel, but one of the prerequisites is that we should have applied for the GPSA funding. Um, <laughs> well, that's uh, that's not how it works. <laughs> That's not that's and that's not how we run the program. <laughs> um, so, I would love to know what department you're in, <laughs> because that's a conversation that should be had. Um, yeah, Rohan's yeah. in psychology, right? And so that might be something that needs to get worked out. Yeah, I think. yeah, for sure. Maybe yeah, I'll talk with psychology, and maybe I don't know if classes. I don't know what at what if it's at department level. That's sort of the what's going on but we and we we see that quite a bit right that where departments try to uh do matching funding for travel applications and stuff if the department has the funding to fund your travel they should be doing that um like i said at the beginning we want to fund travel as a last resort um so you know well that's something that's not on you to figure out exactly. That's maybe for us to talk with the department, and get those expectations clear. But um, yeah, thanks for the question. 
what if yeah i i wonder too if like maybe you could provide the gpsa could provide a statement like with the application for someone in psychology saying like we want the, we are last resort funding right as a way of them being able to apply for their funding first yeah you know what i mean like there might be yeah something like that that has to get worked out so that they're aware of how you fund too They might, they yeah might then open it up. We've seen things like that before where people just provide letters clarifying some of those details. And then maybe that would allow Rohan to move forward with, yeah and you know. i know we i know we talk about it in the it's like at the the preamble in the qualtrics application saying yeah this is last resort but i you know i don't think the department like the department is seeing that so I, i'd be happy to you know write some sort of letter or email or what, what it takes to get that sorted out yeah Well, thank you, Richie. Yeah.